Fun Deborah Mozzie Mail. Oh, you're live. Welcome to <laughs> our Saturday night live stream. Hope everybody is well out there and uh, everything is going well. I got the thumbs up from Chris, so I'm guessing my face is on the screen. How are we all? I'm not getting any. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I'm not sure they can see me, babe. Hey, Cassandra. <laughs> how are you, love? Um, good morning for you, Phyllis. It's an evening for us here. Hey, Lisa. Kerr, how are you going? Hey, Anthea, how are you, love? And Carrie and Kim. Oh, Kim loves your back, darling. You should go be beautiful. Oh, she's not wrong. <laughs> hey, Hilda, good to see you. You made it. Hey, Joe, Brizzy, Jan. I understand you're new tonight, Jan, if I was reading the chat correctly. Welcome. Hey, Stephen and Rodney. <clears throat> Hey Kylie, good to see you love. How are you? Hello Linda. All right, lots of people tonight. turn yeah. up. <clears throat> good to see. All right, so tonight's, hey Di, tonight's is uh, Flat Persian 5 and 1, which is a repeat. We actually did this, I think, in week two. So almost, so about 22 months ago, mm, I suppose, that is. While. 22, 23 months ago, uh, we originally did this on Facebook. It didn't come across because uh, it was all out of sync, so I didn't bother bringing it across to YouTube, so it's not on YouTube at the moment, which is why we thought we would do it again. Um, and I've also got some updated information on it from when I first did it almost two years ago. So it's certainly worth revisiting and um, having a go at. So if everybody is... <laughs> Ready? We've got a queue here. I oh, hate hey Karen. Karen Dawkins. I don't think I've seen Karen here before. No, she might be a newbie. Might be a newbie. All right, peoples, I will pop it over to the other screen and we'll make a start on it. Okay. So <clears throat> I have a little confession to make. When I first did this um, nearly two years ago, I didn't realize at that stage, even though I had been mailing for nine or so years, that there were actually a right-leaning and a left-leaning half Persian three-in-one. Um, I had only learnt the way that I had learnt, and unbeknownst to me, it was left-leaning. And then when I did uh, this flat Persian five-in-one, which starts with half Persian three-in-one, I just naturally did it left-leaning. I have since discovered, it's been pointed out to me, that what I was actually making was not flat Persian 5-in-1, but a sister weave called, now I could be wrong with the pronunciation here, but it's called um, Syringa, I believe. And so that is what I taught you guys, even though I thought I was teaching you flat Persian 5-in-1. And that is what the tutorial shows you how to do. Now they are virtually the same piece piece of weave, um, but one has right leaning as its base and one has left leaning. So I've created both right and left leaning here. So this one is, let me just double check. This one here is Syringa, which is the one that's left leaning. And this is the one that I taught originally two years ago. This one here is actually flat Persian. The one here on my left, ironically, which is right leaning, is <laughs> flat Persian five in one. So as you can see, they are pretty much the same to eyeball them. The differences lie in the you can see here in the silver rings the silver rings are the base weave and you can see that there is a difference with the way they are living at uh, living lying so with the syringa the silver ring is running the same way as those colored rings down the side there and with this one which is the flat persian five and one you can see they're coming in at a v okay so at this sort of level, they pretty much look the same. It's when you get down and look at them very closely that you realize. So my apologies to everybody who thought they'd learnt flat Persian five in one. You hadn't, but 
you had learnt Syringa. So, you know, you've known a weave that you didn't think you knew. So I'm going to show you tonight how to weave it up. They are almost identical, as I said, except for the base weave. I'm not going to show you how to weave up half Persian 3 and one because I've done this quite a lot. If you don't know how to do this, then check out our Azida Haka um, tutorial and I will, after this goes live, stick a little link up here so people can go and check that out. It shows you how to do both left and right leaning half Persian 3 in 1. Starts at about the four and a half minute mark if you want to uh, have a look at that video if you don't know how to do these base weaves. So I've done both the right and the left leaning here just to show you quickly. Uh, this one here at the top is our right leaning and we can see that because the eyes on what is considered sort of like you know the front of the weave here so not the trough the other side are leaning to the right and this one here those same eyes are leaning to the left okay so except for that bit the, the weaving of the, the, the two weaves is exactly the same, okay? The difference is just in the base weave. So, yeah, my apologies for that. As I said, up until about two years ago, I didn't even realise there were two different ones. This has not been a favourite weave of mine, so I learnt how to do it and then I pretty much put it away, uh, which is why I didn't pay any attention to there being uh, different leanings. All right, so we're going to... Excuse me, we're going to do this tonight with our right leaning, so I'm going to put the left leaning away. Uh, Kerr, if you have a look at your, um, at your chain, like I've said, if you look at the um, hillside, okay, what I would consider the front of the chain, you can see these sections here, the eyes where the joins are, they lean to the right if it's right leaning. Uh, you can also, if you're looking at the trough, you can see that the ring on top is on the right side of the ring, okay? So there are indications that that's right leaning. If you look at the other ones, you can see that the eyes are leaning to the left. And when you look at the trough, the side of the ring that's sitting on top is on the left side. Okay, so little little hints like that. So like I said, I've been doing left my whole chainmail life and didn't even realise that there was, you know, another way of doing it until a couple of years ago. Well, not even a couple of years ago. Alright, so once you've weaved up your half Persian 3-in-1, and I've done this with 16 gauge a quarter inch rings or 6.35 millimetre, that is 16 gauge AWG, so the wire diameter is 1.2 mils. Okay, if you're using SWG, you'd be wanting 18 SWG with the same one quarter inch ring diameter. Okay, so to start with, we're going to, I'm going to do this in a couple of different colours. Our base weave is silver, and then I'm going to do these next steps in different colours just to show you. The first step I'm going to do with our black ice and what we simply do here is working on the trough side of our weave okay we're going to place this ring so that it encircles the eye up here on our on the top of our weave okay so this is the bottom this is our top and we want to place this around the eye so that it sits up the top of the weave Okay, now I've just put a twist tie at the end of each. It just helps to hold it all together. That's up to you if you do that, but I just find it useful. And we're going to repeat that same thing all the way down our piece. Okay, so we go down to the next eye, which you can see just there, and we put a ring around that as well. Okay, and close it up. And we just keep working down the length of your bracelet. Now, we do need them to lie a certain way, um, stack a certain way, 
we don't have to worry about that too much at this stage so if you know you got one on top and the next underneath and, and that it doesn't matter now we can fix that up once we start locking it in place with um, all the different with the, with the with the next row okay so I'll just put a couple more in Is everything all right, Chris? I haven't missed yep. anything? Yep. Okay. So is everybody following me so far? Ace just dropped in to say hello. She can't um, stay. Oh, can't stay. All right, Ace. Lovely to see you, hun. Hope everything's okay. Yep. All right. So once you've got that all in place, you just want um, to go all the way to the end of your bracelet. I mean, at least do quite a few if you don't want to go all the way down. And then what we want to do is we want to take up our next colour that we're going to be using. I just lost something that I'd hoped to still have open. Doesn't matter. There we go. All right. I'm good. Oh, quick question before you can I have 8 engage 3 sixteenths? 8 engage um, 3 sixteenths is, I'm assuming you're talking SWG, not AWG. I don't, I, you need to give me more information there, Andrew. If it's SWG, then definitely not. It can't be used. It'll be too tight. Um, AWG, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I would need to look that information up. All right, so we go back to the beginning where we, once we've got all our rings in, or quite a handful in, and we want these rings to be stacking underneath neath each other. So like I said, it doesn't matter if they're not all doing it, just the first couple there, we want them to actually stack underneath. All right, so if you use the ring lord, that's SWG, and no, it won't work for that size. Um, these are the same size as 8 gauge, a quarter inch, what the ring lord stocks, and you really can't go much smaller than this. Okay, so to continue with this, we want to put our next ring... We want to put our next row in to start locking this all into place. So we want it to come up through this row down here. So our bottom ring up through our silver ring or our black ice ring there. And then we want to come down. Let me just see. Wait a minute. It's a bit tricky to start it because you haven't got a quite got the whole thing in place. All right, let me just do that again. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go up through here. There we go. Oh. All fingers and thumbs tonight. We're going to come down. We're going to, oops, let me move these out of the way. I've just realised they're in the way there. We're going to come down through your first black ice, down through your second black ice, and then through the silver one that lies underneath. Okay. And we're going to close that up. Okay, and that's the work there. So our next bit, which will be our first ring that's fully in pattern, we're going to bring it up through the next silver ring. We're going to come up through the black ring. Then we're going to turn it around. We're going to come down through the eye of the next two black ice rings and then through the silver ring okay 
and you can see now that we've gone through five rings here okay so we've got first silver ring a black ice black ice black ice and then a silver ring so there's where our name five in one comes from we put our first ring that's fully in the pattern through five rings does that make sense to everybody one more black eye Stephen it just goes around the eye so open up the tr uh, move it to the trough and you just put the black ice around the eyes All right, you get it? Beautiful. So looking at it again, we go to the next silver ring. Okay, you can see that this silver ring has one of the pink ones through it. So we want to go to the next one. We go up through that, up through the, in this case, the black ice ring that's directly above it. We swing our work around. And then we need to make sure, you can see here that those two rings aren't quite in place. So we want to make sure we've got those rings in place we go down through one two black ice and through the silver that's directly underneath so that we've gone through a total of five rings three at the top and one down the bottom one of the original half Persian uh, two of the original half Persians okay and you just do that basically to the end of your piece so again just look for the silver ring that doesn't have a colored ring through it so you can see it's this one here so we go straight through that straight up through the black ice one above it so that it sits in front of the previous pink one swing your work around make sure you go through two black ices through the eye Okay, that this ring here is stacking on top of the one underneath or the one next to it straight through to the silver that's underneath and close it up. Okay. Tatiana, it doesn't have to be your nemesis. It really isn't. The hardest part of half Persian or any of the half Persian weaves is starting it keeping those first three rings in place if you can get a twist tie and hold it together like we do uh, you can also make a starting piece of um, European 4 and one and use three of the side rings of that to start your piece to hold it in place as long as you can hold those first rings in place after that it becomes much easier I personally think left leaning is much easier than right leaning but that was the one I learned and that's the one I did for years okay and there to do it it doesn't matter which way you start which end you start at I mean I just went back to an end I don't know if it was the beginning or the end because I've got a twist tie in both and I made these up early today so it basically doesn't matter which end you start at. I hope that makes sense. It's 2 a.m. in Beaverton, Oregon. Now it's 12.18. Uh, probably daylight you savings. you had daylight savings yeah. and we had daylight savings, Cynthia, and it's probably marked it all up. I don't know whether... Does YouTube convert it to your time? Because, like... I see my time. I don't know whether it converts it to everybody else's time. I assume it would. Okay. I'll just do one more of these then. So again, we look for the next silver ring that doesn't have the pink ring in it. So this one just here. We're going to come up through that, up through the black ice that's directly above it. We're going to give our work a spin and then we can go down through the eye of the next two black ices and it just naturally goes straight through um, the silver one behind it. Okay, 
and then close it up. Yours converts to Queensland time. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So it does convert to your time. So we always list the events um, usually on a Wednesday. So you guys will have um, a couple of days to come in and check our channel and see what time it starts in your time. Okay, so is everybody happy with that or sh shall I add a few more rings and keep going? Does anybody need any extra help? Stephen's a bit lost. Stephen's a bit lost? Yeah. Okay. What are you lost on, Stephen? So basically you've got your half Persian 3 and 1 and I'm assuming you've got that done. So then I'll just start over this side. So it looks a bit, which means I'm going to have to swap my colours around, I guess. No, I won't start over that. That's just going to confuse everybody. So then you just grab your um, first ring. And you don't have to do it in colours like I have. I've just done this so that um, you guys can see what I'm doing. You want to put your first ring. So you've got these two rows. You want to make your third row. And you just want to put that ring around the eyes okay of the top two rings there it doesn't matter at this stage which way they sit we just need to make sure that we get one around each eye eventually they need to be all sitting um, underneath the previous ring but it doesn't matter at this stage so once you've got all of those rings in or as many as you want to do to start with we want to go back to the beginning your first rings a little bit different because it's not completely in weave so you're just going more or less straight up through that silver ring and then straight down through the two black eyes that's the only one that's a little bit different and of course when you get to the other end it'll be a little bit different but when you start weaving it all the way through we look for the ring that doesn't have the silver ring that doesn't have a one already in it a color ring already in it so we're looking at this row down here we go straight up through there straight up through the black ice we spin our work around and we go down through the eye of those two black ice rings there straight through the silver ring that lies behind them Okay. Does that help, Stephen? I'll do it once more. Okay, we look for the next silver ring that doesn't have a pink ring already going through it. We go straight through that. Straight through the black ice one that sits above it. We spin our work around. Okay, make sure that these rings are lying properly so that each ring is underneath the previous ring. And we just go straight through those eyes and we just naturally go all the way through those silver ring behind it and we close it up. Okay, I hope that helps. Are they talking about our containers? Yeah. Are they cute? Do you like the little lids he's printed for them? Now these are not storage containers by any stretch of the imagination guys. If you knock these flying your rings are going to go everywhere. But we've got these little lids. One so you can make it just a temporary, you know, stop dust and everything falling in. But what it also does is when you've got rings in here, they don't, oh, I can't get it up, here we go. If you've got some rings in here, they don't stack so well on top of each other if there's open rings and things floating around in there. But if you've got a lid sitting on top, you can then stack these on top of the lid and they're much more stable. And it's got a little lid in here, so it all sorts of fits in. Oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, Anna, I only speak English. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish I spoke other languages, but no, I don't. Okay, so if everybody's good with that weave, 
So it's around the silver eye and through the black eye. Yes. So you've got row one and two here. You want to put your black rings around the eyes of the rings up up the top there in row two. Okay. And then you want to put the color ring goes up through the ring in row one, up through the previous ring of row four, and then back down again, and then through the next silver. Okay, so effectively you're going around the silver in the pink as well, through the, the eye of the black ice. Fine and dandy. All right. So yes, I will be, as I said, I, I did actually give out the wrong instructions a couple of years ago. I do need to make some changes to the PDF and things like that uh, since I've since discovered that I was doing it wrong. Um, but now I've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was about to press stop streaming then for a that minute. That would be bad. Yeah, I hadn't quite finished yet. All right, so hopefully everybody is good with that. If not, wait till the stream is finished processing and watch it all again. Okay, uh, so while I've got everybody here, for make it in your days off. Sounds like a plan. Good plan. Yep, yep. Live and learn, right? Well, yeah. honestly, <laughs> I had no idea at the time, Lisa. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a little embarrassing to say I've been mailing for so long and... Um, yeah, but I'm confused. Is it live and learn left or live, live and, and learn, learn right? right. <laughs> In my case, it was live and learn right because uh, I already knew how to go left. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I didn't... Um, I didn't even know that there was two different leanings. It's, it's just very bizarre. But anyway, what's done is done and you now know how to do two weaves. So, it... The, it the extra two rows are exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether it's right or left leaning. They, they weave up the same. It's just that first base weave. Oh, look, I don't know everything, Lisa. I f I'm far from knowing everything. So, um, you know, learn from my mistakes, basically. Um, I try to be transparent in most things that I do. Except when I was Santa Claus. Because... <laughs> All right, lovelies, while I've got you here, I want to talk to you about something we're going to be trialing next week with the live stream. So instead of doing um, the live stream like, we, like we're currently doing now, we're going to try what one of YouTube's things, which is called Premiere or Premiere or however you want to pronounce it, which will basically be what will happen is we, I will shoot next week's video in advance. I will load it up to YouTube and I will schedule it for the same time that we have our normal streams. But what will happen is that the video will just run. So it will be much like a project video. Um, but while that is running, you guys will be able to chat with uh, both Chris and myself like you are now in the chat window. Uh, Chris and myself and everybody else that turns up to the stream. So I won't be talking to you. You won't see my face outside of whatever it is that I've recorded at the beginning of the video. So it'll run just, just like a project video. Uh, but we will still be here and we will still be able to chat with you via the chat window. So this is something we're trialling. One of the reasons we're trialling it is we get a lot of feedback about the fact that these live streams are filled with too much chat and um, not enough teaching so people um, which is fine while we're live but I do understand where people come along and watch this the video and want to learn and they've got to wade through you know 10 minutes of hello how's the weather blah 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 before they get to the actual teaching so I do understand and I want to make these a good experience for everybody and this sort of seems like a, a good compromise to us. So we will still be able to chat via the keyboard and I'll actually be able to chat via the keyboard. I can't do it now because my keyboard is all covered for the streaming. But Chris and I will both be able to sit and chat with you guys while you're watching the demonstration. So you can still ask me some questions. We can't stop the video. We can't rewind. My understanding is you can scrub it back a little bit while you're watching it, but it may mean that you'll miss the end of it 
Okay, so this is very new to us. It's still a learning experience for us as well. It's just a trial. I'm really hoping it goes well. <laughs> um, but it doesn't. if it doesn't, we will jump on straight away um, with a live stream and fix it up if it doesn't work. But this is just something we want to trial and we're hoping um, that we still, this means we still get to chat with you guys, which we absolutely love doing. We don't want to stop doing that. But we also want to do um, something for the people that just want to watch the videos. Okay. So the new system will be no talking. No, only me talking um, to the camera, not to you guys directly. So if you ask me a question, I can type it in, but I can't um, chat with you face to face. The other, the other reason we're looking at doing this, if it works, is we're honestly we're hoping it gives us some free time on a Saturday as well, guys. Um, we just, I, it's at the moment for the last two years we haven't been able to make any plans with family, go away for the weekend or do anything like that. So we can still do this and we can still chat with you wherever we are doing whatever we're doing, but we don't have to be tied down to our desk to do it. So it's a twofold thing. So some of it, I have to admit, some of it is for us. We, you know, we want to give ourselves a little bit of time. I want to be able to go see my parents. I want to go spend some time with my kids. Um, and we can't do that at the moment on a, on a weekend. So it is a twofold thing. I understand that you guys um, love the interaction with us, which is why we're trying to still do some sort of interaction with you, still give you a quality product, and still give us a little bit of a life on the weekend. So I hope you guys can understand. As I said at this stage, it's just a trial, um, but we're going to do it next week. Okay, so what will happen is we'll set it up for probably seven o'clock and this might change because like I said, we're only learning here. We'll set it up for seven o'clock. The uh, premiere will start at seven um, and what you will see is actually a two minute countdown. So it allows two minutes for everybody to settle down and get their popcorn ready and all the rest of it. And then once the two minute countdown stops, the video will start playing automatically. So we can chat before that. I don't know about chatting after that. Um, I think you can chat any time in advance. But as I said, I'm still not 100% sure. But this is something we're trying next week. And hopefully it works for everybody. And we're planning next week to do a live stream straight after the premiere anyway, so we can get some feedback. All right. There you go, the boss has spoken. We're doing a live stream after the premiere, or the premiere, however you like to pronounce yeah. it. <laughs> I never know which way is correct. <laughs> so hopefully, um, you know, this will still work for us. And if not, we'll keep going the way we are. Well, and that's right, and we'll try, and, we'll try to um, come up with something else that works. But yeah, we really, you know, we, we are trying to do the best for everybody. Um, everybody has different needs and different requirements and we're not going to please everybody unfortunately but we're hoping to please as many of you guys as we can so like a normal live stream the chat's cut off I'm assuming so Brizzy but my understanding is that you can go into it and chat in advance which I think you can do with yes. the scheduled events anyway. Yes. You yeah. can go into we the event as soon as it's scheduled and chat with anybody that turns up. We have a few early birds. Um, and you can do that from the day I think that I started, yeah. which is like normally a Wednesday. You can That's actually great. go into the schedule and chat in the schedule if there's other people, the scheduled event, if there's other people in there. So it'll be the same as that. I'm assuming it won't be there as soon as the video ends. Small businesses are a lot of work, Sandra, and we do spend a lot of time um, on this business, and, and that's great, but, but every now and then we want to um, we want to have the ability to spend time with the fam and the friends and, and just kick back and relax ourselves. All right, um, I don't think I have anything else. No, I think that's... That's it. We haven't gone any further with Malcon or anything. I plan to go up to the school next week and start uh, booking that in. And Dark BA is on sale. The Dark BA is listed. Um, yeah. 
We do have the new postal thing in place. It will cut out like a normal one. Thanks, Brizzy. Well, you've got more experience than I have there. So, yeah, all right. So we need to make sure. But like Chris said, uh, for this first one especially, what we'll do is we'll just... Um, Jump on for anyone else afterwards to yeah, a normal live stream. And yeah, just have a and we'll just have a quick live stream and then we'll probably... Yeah. We won't make that public. So once it's pro uh, finished processing, we'll yeah. we'll make it private. So that second live stream won't um, won't be found on YouTube again. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I've gone blank. Sorry. Going up to the school. The booking the Black hall. VA. No, there was something else I was talking about. Oh, the shipping. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we've done a change with the way we interact with Australia Post with our shipping. So you guys that have bought from us have probably noticed that. Hopefully that is working well for everybody, uh, that you don't find the emails from Australia Post too annoying. Me personally, I love knowing where my parcel is. Um, but let us know if you have any issues or problems or concerns with, with what is happening with Australia Post. It also means subscribers from our pub and the back catalogue will also yes. get... Yeah, so what this will also mean, as Chris said, um, now with the back catalogue um, and especially Mail Club, because I send so many out in one go, it's difficult for me to add tracking information. This way, doing it, um, you guys will get your tracking information for your Mail Clubs sent to you. So that will be a bonus for you. Um, and I think that's it at the moment. So we're still working behind scenes and getting things done and, and shaking things up. And um, hopefully, it's all for the better. For a big 2019. That's what we're aiming for. All right, beautifuls, does anybody have any questions or anything? I don't think I missed anything. No. Um, uh, Phyllis. Someone did ask if you'd done it in different colours. Oh, uh, well, the original one I did in, and I, I, I don't know where it is. Oops. I couldn't find it. Uh, it was done in sky blue and uh, royal blue, and then these ones. So they're the, that's the only time I've I've made it recently. <laughs> so these ones are black ice and um, and dark rose. Personally, I like the base, the half Persian three in one in silver. That's my my personal preference, but really, it's up to you guys. All right. Anything else from anybody? They've all gone very quiet on me. Uh -huh. Hello. Is the microphone still on? <laughs> yes, it is. I hear you. You hear me? All right. Beautiful. Okay. Well, if nobody else arranging Sydney meetup. Okay. Oh, we wouldn't be able to make it that weekend anyway, Stephen. I will be busily making um, mail club parcels, actually, that weekend. Colour suggestions are helpful. Um... Colour's so difficult, Lisa, though, because it's so um, personal. Well, I guess if you can show different colours, it yeah. helps other people yeah. get an idea what it looks like. I mean, my favourite colour combinations, uh, black ice and lavender is a be lavender pink is a beautiful. Black ice in anything is pretty much beautiful, except for maybe black ice and black. Um, your lavender and your purples always look good together. Your reds and your blacks, I mean, they're pretty... Um, standard colors but they're the colors i like to see together um champagne and lavender pink actually looks really nice if you're into that but yeah most of the pastels look really beautiful together it would be good the black base mm. yeah a black base would work really well too yeah i sort of like my my, my base to be not the yeah not the bright outstanding one Dark rose and lavender. Yeah, look, I think most of the colours match really well. Oh, someone going? Yeah. All right, Rosie, thanks for joining us, honey. We'll see you next time. But, um, yeah, you know. Whatever floats your boat, I reckon, at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they're saying is that to get to see the different colour combinations yeah. helps them give some ideas. I understand, I understand. All right, lovelies. Well, I might go then if um, everybody is okay. We will catch up with you through the week on Aussie Mailers. Um, 
At the moment, we're not taking any more new memberships for Mail Club. We do still have the ability to sign up for the back catalogue, which is made up of um, kits that we've done in the past for Mail Club. Um, but right now, Mail Club itself is closed for sign-ups. We're not taking any more for the next month or two. Hey, Phyllis. Well, I hope you had a good night, darling, or a good morning for you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Have to go, daughter. All right, no worries, Kerry. All right, Lisa, see you next week, honey. Thanks for turning up. Well, I'll be able to chat with you guys via the um, via the keyboard next week. It won't be just Chris. All right, well, we'll call it quits. Different next week. It is going to be very different next week. I won't have to worry if I've brushed my hair or not. <laughs> Chris wanted to know, know what I'd done different with my hair, and I was like, I brushed it. <laughs> all right, lovelies. Um, I will see you all next week. Okay, take care. Mwah.